Hello, in this video, I'm going to explain what the standard app design workflow looks like. The first step is business requirements gathering. From that, you can generate a set of wireframes, which basically dictates where all of the controls and the data gets laid out on all of your screens. With that skeleton in place, you can actually put paint on it and create a set of design comps. Now the design comps are going to show you what your app will look like as a finished product. Then from the design comps, you're going to generate all of the images that you need to import into Xcode to style your project. So let's talk about each of these steps a little more closely. During this step, you'll be deciding what your app does. It's not enough to say that you want to build a social media app. Really think through what the core features of your app will be. Then after you know what the core features are, think about any additional supporting features that would be nice to have, but not exactly a core feature. The reason we make this distinction between what a core feature is and what a supporting feature is, is so that you don't put all of your eggs in one basket, meaning that you can create a smaller, but essential version of your app containing all of the most essential features and release that first before you commit to building all of the features out just to discover that people don't like your app for some reason. So it's a way of just sort of hedging your bets. Now you write down all of these features down into a document because you'll need to refer back to it and you might even need to show this document to other people. Now all of this upfront work is to provide a solid foundation for you to create your app design. Next up, you're going to take these business requirements and organize your ideas into something that is visual, specifically wireframes. When you're working on wireframes, you're focused on usability and organizing the information in a way that makes sense. Forget about how your app looks for a second and put yourself in the shoes of your target user. Imagine they're using your app. How do you present the data in a way that's easy to understand? Where do you put buttons and menus so that using your app is intuitive? Use tried and true structures that are ingrained in iOS users. For example, if your app has several different sections, iOS users are very used to using a tab bar along the bottom, so you can consider using that for your app in this scenario. Sometimes when you're stuck, try downloading some popular apps and tap around the app, get a feel for how they're organizing their app to get some ideas for your own app. What you want to get out of this phase is a set of rough wireframes that show all of the screens in your app and how the controls and data are laid out on each screen. You don't need any fancy tools for this, even just paper and pencil is fine. The important thing is that this step forces you to stop and think through things and to make some decisions, making sure that all of the business requirements are met because at this stage of the app development process, things are still easy and cheap to change. Trust me, you wanna avoid a situation where you realize you're missing a requirement after the app has been coded. At that point, it's going to be costly to change things. After you've got a solid idea for how your app is going to be structured, it's time to give it a custom look and feel. This is where your design skills are going to come into play. Using the wireframes as a guide, you'll be using a graphics program to create the design. Some popular tools for doing design comps are Sketch, Figma, or Photoshop. I figure that I need to take a little bit of time to mention interactive prototyping. This is where you turn your design comps into something that can be put on a device to be swiped through. Some of these prototypes can get pretty intense with tapping on hotspots to trigger different transitions. The whole goal of an interactive prototype is to be able to experience something slightly more tangible than just design comps on a screen because at this point in the process, things are still easy and inexpensive to change. Now, this step is completely optional. If you need to convince someone to invest in your business or maybe a potential partner, then it could be useful to turn your design comps into a swipeable prototype on your device so that you can show it to people. However, if you're a developer building an app for yourself, you can probably skip this step. I spoke with some of my friends who are still in the consulting industry, and they told me that they don't use interactive prototyping because their clients won't pay for it. But the caveat is that their clients are long-term clients who have been with them building apps for a long time, so they're used to knowing what to expect. For other clients who are new to the app development process, they might want to pay for an interactive prototype. Once your design is done, you'll need to separate it out into pieces and export them as JPEGs and PNG images. You'll put these images into your Xcode project where you'll apply them to the elements in your storyboard. And when you're done, your app will have a custom look and feel. All right, so that's the app design process. 
Hey, did you join my free Facebook community yet? That's where I hang out along with a ton of other people learning iOS just like yourself. I also post early access to all of my videos inside that group before I put them on YouTube. You can also get help with any questions you're having. Visit the link below, click on the join group button, and I'll approve your request right away. All right, so I'll see you in there. Talk soon.